I'm Eddie Ruiz, and I exist to help sharpen your biblical mindset to love God and love others well. And welcome to episode two of our series on systematic theology. And whether you're a newbie or a seasoned pro, there's always something new that we can learn together. So grab your Bible, grab a notepad, let's get old school, and let's dive right in. And today we're talking about the major motifs of scripture and how God reveals himself through these themes. And as you know, the Bible is an incredible collection of 66 books divided into the Old and New Testament. And each book is really like a puzzle that fits into God's grand picture of his own revelation. But there are five major motifs that stand out and weave through the entire narrative. So let's explore them together. So what exactly is a biblical motif? Well, think of it as a reoccurring theme or an idea that appears throughout the Bible, helping to unify the entire message. These motifs are like threads that tie the different books and stories together, revealing deeper truths about God's nature and his plan for humanity. By identifying and understanding these motifs, we can see how the different parts of scripture fit into God's overarching story. And so let's break them all down. Motif number one, the character of God. The Bible is fundamentally God's self-revelation. He shows us who he is, his sovereignty, his holiness, and his love. As an example, we see God as creator in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and we see him as savior through Jesus in the Gospels. Think of it like a parent setting rules for their kids. It's not just to control, but to protect and guide them. In the same way, God's laws reveal his holiness and desire for us to live in the right way. From the creation of the universe, to the giving of the law, to the command of Jesus to love others, God's standards of righteousness are clear and unwavering from the very first book. The Bible portrays God's character through various means. In the Old Testament, God's nature is revealed through his creation, his interactions with humanity, and his spoken and written words. From the incredible creation account in Genesis to his righteous judgment in covenantal promises, God's attributes are consistently showcased. In the New Testament, God's character is mostly and most vividly revealed in the person of Jesus Christ as the second person of the Trinity and more on the Trinity to come later on. And as Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 puts it with regards to Jesus, the Son is the image of the invisible God firstborn over all of creation. Motif number two, divine judgment specifically for sin and disobedience. The Bible doesn't shy away from showing the consequences of sin. If anything, in our modern culture, we tend to shy away from talking about sin because it's, well, uncomfortable, but so is hell. So i much rather address what the Bible talks about to be consistent in obedience to the scripture rant over. From Adam and Eve's fall in Genesis chapter 3 to the flood in Genesis chapter 6 through 9, it's clear that sin leads to judgment. Romans 6.23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It honestly reminds me of my kids touching a hot stove, even though they know the consequences and that they're going to get burned. In that same way, when we go against God's standards, there are inevitable repercussions. The Bible is filled with stories like Cain and Abel, the rebellion of Israel, and the rejection of Christ, all showing the severe outcomes of disobedience. And throughout the scriptures, we see numerous examples of God's judgment as a result of sin. In the Old Testament, the disobedience of Adam and Eve led to their extreme expulsion from the Garden of Eden, and the catastrophic flood during Noah's time serves as a stark warning and a reminder about the consequences of widespread sin. The New Testament also emphasizes this exact theme, highlighting the eternal consequences of rejecting Jesus Christ, as seen in the teachings and the parables of Jesus himself and the dire warnings in the book of Revelation. There are consequences to sin. Motif number three, divine blessing. See, God promises blessings to those who trust and obey him. And no, this is not a defense for the prosperity gospel, which is completely and biblically errant and founded in greed and pride. That's not what we're talking about. In the Old Testament, we see this with Abraham, who was blessed for his faith in Genesis chapter 12. The New Testament echoes this in James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. 
Let me put it this way. It's like studying for a really hard exam and seeing the reward of that effort with good grades. In the same way, Abraham's faith was rewarded with a covenant of promises and blessings. And as believers, we are assured of the same blessings in both this life and the life to come when we live in obedience to God's word. But that's the key word, obedience. Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commands. The Bible continually affirms that God rewards faith and obedience. Abraham's story is a prime example. But in that same way, the New Testament highlights the blessings of living a life aligned with God's will, from the peace that surpasses all understanding to the eternal rewards promised to the faithful. This particular motif underscores that faith and obedience are not just duties, but they are pathways to experiencing the favor of God. Motif number four, the Savior's sacrifice. The entire Bible points to Jesus, the promised Savior. In the Old Testament, he's foreshadowed through prophecies and sacrifices like the Passover lamb in Exodus 12. And in the New Testament, he fulfills these prophecies through his life, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. John chapter 1 verse 29 says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, solidifying and fulfilling a bunch of different prophecies in that verse alone. Think of it like a superhero story where the hero sacrifices everything to save the world. It sounds pretty cliche, right? But they got that from Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate hero who gave his life to save us from our sins. And throughout both the New and the Old Testament, the need for a savior and his sacrificial death is literally a central theme. Jesus' sacrificial role is central to the biblical narrative. The Old Testament is filled with types and shadows that point directly to him. From the sacrificial system instituted under Moses to the prophecies of a suffering servant in Isaiah 53, in the New Testament, these prophecies are fulfilled as Jesus becomes the ultimate sacrifice for humanity's sin, your sin and my sin, offering redemption and reconciliation with God. This motif emphasizes that salvation has always been and will always be through Jesus Christ. And this leads us to the fifth and final motif, the kingdom of glory. The Bible concludes with the promise of Christ's return and the establishment of his eternal kingdom. Revelation chapter 21 paints a beautiful picture of this new heaven and new earth where there's no more death and there's literally no more pain. It's like a storybook ending where good triumphs over evil and everyone lives happily ever after. But for believers in Jesus, this isn't just a fairy tale, but a guaranteed future reality for us. And prophecies in both the Old and New Testament, such as Isaiah chapter 9 and Revelation 22, assure us of this incredible and glorious future that we have in Christ. The concept of God's kingdom is a thread that runs from Genesis to Revelation. The Old Testament prophets spoke of a future kingdom ruled by the Messiah, a kingdom of peace and justice. The New Testament reveals that Jesus is the king of this promised kingdom, which will be fully realized at his second coming. Revelation provides an extremely vivid description of the new heaven and new earth where God dwells with his people in perfect harmony and glory. This motif assures believers of a hopeful future and the ultimate triumph of God's plan. Okay, Eddie. Thanks for breaking those down. And to that, I say you're welcome. But how do we apply these motifs to life practically? Well, that's a great question. And really understanding these biblical motifs is not just an academic exercise, but a guide for everyday life. Recognizing God's character helps us trust him more fully in our daily challenges. Awareness of his divine judgment reminds us of the importance of living righteously through the power of the Holy Spirit and avoiding sin at all cost. The promises of a blessing from faith and obedience encourage us to stay committed to our faith, even when it's difficult, because we know there will be times of trial and tribulation. Knowing about Jesus' sacrifice gives us a sense of profound gratitude and compels us to live sacrificially for others. And finally, the hope of a coming kingdom inspires us to live with purpose and anticipation, knowing that our efforts for God's kingdom have eternal significance. It's not just study, 
it's real life. So there you have it, a semi deep dive into the five major motifs of the Bible. Understanding these themes helps us grasp the Bible's unified message of redemption and God's amazing plan for you and for me. Thanks for hanging out with me as we dive into these biblical concepts together. If you enjoyed our discussion and are still with me, share it with a friend. There's always something new to learn. And don't forget to subscribe to keep spreading the gospel of Jesus. And remember, friends, keep it biblical, and I'll see you in the next one.